Hey, good morning, everybody. That's Pastor Randy here with May Free Church and Believers in Christ Fellowship. And I have my earbuds in, and I'm trying to take them out every morning. <laughs> just, just, uh, I, I get so used to them being in my ear, man. You know what I mean? So I just forget to take them out. But so, uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Whether you're joining us on Facebook or are tuning in through our podcasting platform, we're thrilled to have you with us today. As we gather in this virtual space, let's take a moment to appreciate, you know, the diverse community that spans across the world. You know, that's where we're reaching. We're reaching into Europe now, which is a, a, a great thing. You know what I mean? It's just awesome that we're doing that. You know, um, we've had places where we've reached into England. You know, um, we reach into, you know, Uganda and stuff like that. And, and uh, um, you know, so, you know, we're, our, our reach is getting far. So if you hit that like button and 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 you subscribe to our podcast and channels, that gets our, that gets us out more. You know what I mean? That puts our platform out more. So, you know, if you guys could do that, that would be great, you know, and, and like us on uh, YouTube as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and stuff like that. I think it's very important. Um, you know, and uh, watch our videos. You know what I mean? It's just me preaching, you know, but, you know, um, but it's it's so, we need to be hearing the word of God daily, guys. And that's why I do this. You know what I mean? I need to hear the word of God daily, you know? So, so I'm excited to dive into a passage that resonates deeply with the essence of our faith and journey. Right. It's a narrative that unfolds in first Samuel chapter 14, verses 16 through 23. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time, God. We just ask that you get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward. Lord, we put on the full armor of God, which is said in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. So we just ask, Lord, that you build up the hedges of protection that shields around us today, Heavenly Father, that we go through this incredible message of bold, uh, bold faith in the midst of a battle, Lord. And, and we just ask that you just minister to our hearts, Lord, and minister to our lives, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for all that you have done for us in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, uh, yeah. So uh, now, for those that might be new or are just joining us, on this incredible journey through First Samuel and Second Samuel, you know, let me kind of set the stage for today's exploration, right? In the in the larger narrative of First Samuel, we find ourselves at the pivotal moment in the history of Israel. You know, the Israelites are facing a formidable enemy in the in, in the Philistines, right? So, and the atmosphere is charged with tension and uncertainty, and and it, it's against this backdrop that we encounter. And an inspiring story of, of faith, courage, and and divine intervention. You know, First Samuel 14 verses 16 through 23 zooms in on the son of King Saul, Jonathan, a man of bold faith, and he stands at the intersection of a daunting challenge and an unwavering trust in God. Right. So as we pack unpack this message and this passage together. I want to encourage you to reflect on the challenges that you might be facing in your own life. You know, whether it's personal struggle, uncertainties in your career, or just the complexity of an ever-changing world. You know, the theme of faith in the midst of challenges is universal and timeless. You know, the significance uh, of faith in our journey cannot be overstated. You know, it, it, it's an anchor that, that steadies us in the storm. The assurance that even when the odds seem insurmountable, that we are not alone. It, it, in the narrative of Jonathan, we witness a life-changing power of faith. It, it, not just as a theological concept, but as a lived-out experience. Right? It, it, it's not a blind leap into the unknown, but a confident step rooted in the trust and reliance on the one who holds the future. Amen. So in today's world, you know, marked with uncertainty and rapid change, the message of bold faith remains ever relevant as ever. Right. It, it, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the challenges that surround us. But the story of Jonathan reminds us that 
even in the face of adversity, our faith can be the catalyst for change. It's a call to rise above fear and doubt, to embrace the audacity of belief that propels us forward. You know what I mean? Knowing that God, that the God that we serve is greater than any obstacles before us. Amen? Amen. So, as we embark through the journey of 1 Samuel 14, 16 to 23, let's open up our hearts to the lessons it holds for us today. You know, may this exp exploration deepen our understanding of faith and inspire us to face challenges with the same courage that is characterized by Jonathan's actions, right? Together, let's discover the timeless truth that in the tapestry of our lives, faith is the thread that weaves us into the narrative of divine grace and unwavering hope. Amen? Amen. So let's read today's text. We're in First Samuel chapter 14, 16 through 23. So it says that, and the watchman of Saul in, in, in Gibbabah of, Jeb of, of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude was dispersing here and there. Then Saul said to the people who were with him, Count and see who has gone from us. And when they counted, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. Saul said to uh, Aisha, Bring the ark of God here, for the ark of God went at the time with the people of Israel. So now that while Saul was talking to the priest, the tumult in the camp of the Philistines increased more and more. So Saul said to the priest, withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all the people who were with him uh, uh, rallied and went into battle and behold every philistine sword was against his fellow and there was a, a very great confusion now the hebrews who had been with the philistines before that time and had gone up with them into the camp even they turned to be with the israelites who were with saul and jonathan likewise all the men of israel who had hidden themselves in the hills of the country of ephraim heard that the Philistines were fleeing, they too followed hard after them in battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed beyond Bethaven. So let's journey back to a pivotal moment in history of, in the history of Israel. You know, a time when the nation stood at the precipice of a formal cha formable challenge, right? Like the, the, the setting unfolds in, in 1 Samuel verses 1 through 15, a, a chapter that captures the essence of courage and faith embodied in the character of Jonathan, right? And, and as we enter this narrative, you know, we find that Jonathan, the son of King Saul, contemplating a dire circumstance surrounding his people. The Israelites are encamped against an adversary, the Philistines, who was a formidable enemy looms over the horizon like an insurmountable mountain like right? the atmosphere is thick with tension right and and, and the, the uncertainty of an impending conflict casting a shadow over the camp now amidst this backdrop of fear and tension jonathan emerges as that beacon of courage and unwavering faith right the text describes an audacious plan he concedes a plan that defies conventional wisdom uh, a, a, of the military strategy of that time. Jonathan, accompanied by his armor bearer, embarks on a daring mission to confront the Philistine outpost. And Jonathan's actions are nothing short than courageous. In a time when Israelite, when the Israelite army is paralyzed by fear, he steps forward with a radical trust in God's sovereignty. Right? His faith is not passive, but it's active. Bold declaration that God is not confined by the limitations of human understanding. Jonathan's courage is not fueled by arrogance or self-reliance, but about a profound belief in the power of God to overcome the seemingly insurmountable. You know, the, the, the Israelites were entrenched in, in, in their fear. You know, it, it represented a stark contrast to, to Jonathan's audacity. Daunting, the dawning Philistine army ha has paralyzed them, casting a shadow over their collective spirit, right? 
And it's in this scenario that resonates with our own lives. You know, that the moments when we're confronted with challenges that appear overwhelming, situations where fear threatens to immobilize us. Yet in the midst of this, Jonathan's story becomes an invitation for us to reevaluate our perspective on, 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 on challenges, right? You know, I, I don't talk much, man, about the conflict that's going on in Israel, you know, um, because I don't really have much to say about that. But it's just like this, man. If they stepped out in, in, in the power of Christ, they could beat the, the, the Palestinians. But see, the, the Jews don't believe Jesus was the Messiah. And, and, and that, and, and, and that, that kind of takes a, a weird, a weird twist, man. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, they could beat the, the, the Palestinians right now if they just accepted Christ as their, as, as the Messiah. And I, I think, you know, God is just waking them up right now. You know what I mean? And, and, and are the Jews going to God? I'm sure they are, but you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's like the same thing that happened here 3,000 years ago can happen now if they just trusted in God and they just accepted Christ as their Savior. I believe that that, that everything would, would, would just, that would be over, you know? But, you know, the, but the Jews need to learn. And I love the Jews and I pray for them daily, you know, and, 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 uh, yeah. So, you know, but see, you know, emphasizing the power of bold faith in uncertain situations, Jonathan's example challenges us to move beyond the paralysis of fear, right? Fear is a liar, guys. And his story is a testament to the life changing nature of faith, demonstrating that even in the face of overwhelming odds, we can find strength in trusting God, right? The power of bold faith lies not in the absence of fear, but in the decision to confront it head on, right? Armed with the assurance that God is with us. So as we dive into this setting of First uh, Samuel uh, verses 1 through 15, you know, let us kind of reflect on our own lives. You know, what, what Philistine army looms over your horizon? What challenges seem insurmountable, casting a shadow over your spirit, right? Jonathan's courageous act of faith beckons us to step out, confront our fears with a bold declaration that God is greater. It's an invitation to embrace an, an uncertainty with confidence knowing that our faith has the power to reshape the narrative of our lives. Now let's let, let's dive into the, the heart of this narrative, right? Exploring the impact of one man's faith in verses 16 and 17. You know, Jonathan, with his unwavering trust in God, becomes a catalyst for change, right? Not only in, in, in his, his own life, but in a broader context, of the discouraged Israelite army. Like Jonathan's initiative and trust in God stands out as pillars of inspiration. In the midst of the battlefield, as chaos ensues, Jonathan sees the moment, right? His decision to take on the Philistine outpost accompanied by his armor bearer, it's not a reckless act, but it's a calculated expression of faith. Right. He trusts that God is not bound by conventional military strategies, but rather victory lies in the radical dependence of the almighty, almighty God. Right. Right. The, the, this initiative is a powerful demonstration of, of, of individual faith in action. Right. Jonathan's example challenges us to challenges the status quo and disrupts the atmosphere of fear that has gripped the Israelite camp. It prompts us to, to consider our own lives, right? Where we are being called to step out in faith, to take bold initiatives that require trust in God's guidance. And it's so true, man. The ripple effect of Jonathan's faith can felt, can, can, is felt throughout the discouraged Israelites army, right? P picture the scene. A young man defying the odds, taking on an, an enemy stronghold, 
This singular act reverberates through the ranks, whispering hope into the hearts of the soldiers who had been paralyzed by fear. Jonathan's courage becomes a star, a spark that ignites a flame of determination among the Israelites. It, in the face of overwhelming circumstances, the impact of one person's faith extends beyond the, the individual. It has the power to shift the collective atmosphere, infusing uh, uh, courage into the hearts of those who have, got, have, who have grown weary. Right? This, this, this principle is not confined to the pages of ancient scripture. Right? It resonates with our lives today. Your faith, your decision to trust God in the face of adversity can have a ripple effect on those around you, your family, your friends, and, and your community, even your church community. Jonathan's story really prompts us to reflect on the influence our faith has on the broader context of our community. You know, how might our individual act of trust in God inspire the collective courage? Right. In, in a word, often marked in, in, in a word in a world that's often marked with uncertainty, uncertainty and discouragement. Our faith can be a beacon of hope, a reminder that even in the midst of the darkest moments, God is still at work. Consider the challenges facing your community or those around you. You're the homeless. You know, I go to a church that focuses on the homeless, right? And, and I've got a huge love and heart for the homeless. I saw a video this morning, man, that just put me in tears. You know, put me in tears, man. And, and it's like, you know, the Bible says that we'll always have the homeless, right? So why are we out there helping them? Why are, why, why are we, you know, doing things, giving money to ministries that are doing this? You know what I mean? And this is the whole thing. You know what I mean? So, in the spirit of Jonathan, how can your faith initiate positive, positive change? You know, it might be even a small act of kindness, a word of encouragement, or a bold step towards justice. The individual faith, when lived out authentically, has the potential to, 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 to catalyze a ripple effect of hope transforming not only our lives but the lives of those that we touch you know as we explore the impact of one man's faith let us let us be inspired to go cultivate a faith that goes beyond personal comfort you know a faith that has the power to uplift and empower those around us creating a ripple effect of courage and hope in the face of in the face of life challenges now, let's turn our focus to the divine intervention that unfolds in, in verses 18 through 23. It's, like, it's a testament to, to, to the ways in which God responds to bold faith of his people, exemplified in Jonathan. Jonathan's audacious act of faith, guys, undertaken with, with, with trust in God's sovereignty, triggers a remarkable response from the divine, right? You know, as Jonathan and his armor bearer engage uh, the Philistine outpost, God's hand moves in a way that transcends human understanding. The chaos that ensues among the Philistines is not a result of conventional army tactics, but it's a manifestation of divine intervention. God's response to Jonathan's faith is characterized by confusion and chaos among the Philistines. Right, the narrative is vividly describes the panic that is set, spreading like wildfire through the enemy camp. This is not a mere coincidence or a stroke of luck. It's a divine disruption orchestrated by God in response to the bold faith displayed by Jonathan. You know, the, the, the very elements that the Philistines relied upon for, for their strength becomes instruments of confusion so this section prompts us to, to to prompts us to reflect on the ways in which god works uh in a, in a in unexpected ways to deliver his people the narrative challenges our complete conceived notions that 
of, of how God should act or intervene, right? It, it reminds us that divine intervention is not always accompanied by thunderous display or dramatic gestures. Sometimes God work is subtle, unfolding in the midst of the chaos and confusion and turning plans of the enemy on their head. In our own lives, there are moments when 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 we long for divine intervention, right? We we face challenges and uncertainties and unseen and, and insurmountable odds. The story of Jonathan invites us to consider that God's response to our faith might not always follow our prescribed expectation. It might be unconventional, unexpected, and beyond our comprehension. I know I've been going through that for the last six, seven months. You know what I mean? Just, I want this to do this, but God's going, no, man, I want to teach you something. But I already know that he's going to turn these people and he's going to draw them in and they're going to become mighty Christians and all this is going to go away. I totally believe that. I'm totally praying for that. I'm praying for these people to really, really understand scripture, to really, really, really get a relationship with God, a true relationship with God, you know, and, and, and I pray for them daily. And I, I know, I know they watch my videos and, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But, you know, whatever, dude, you know what I mean? But I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your wife and praying for, for the other, other two, you know, and, and I am because these four people, these three people are in direct rebellion against god and i'm praying for them to come into to 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 right relationship i don't care what they're doing to me i can give a crap god's got it i don't have to worry about it but i just want them to come into right relationship with god true relationship with god right i mean we're supposed to pray for our enemies and love our enemies right well this is how you do it you pray for them right and and, and we see here of jonathan's bold faith you know, it's going, you know what? We're, we're, we're going up against battle, man. And, and I'm just going to have faith that God's going to work it out. You know, if, if, if all this stuff doesn't go away and, I, and I've and i got to pay all this money and i got to do this and i got to do that, that's great. That's fine. You know what I mean? I'll do that. You know what I mean? I will. You know? Uh, but but I don't care about all that, right? What I care about is, is them coming into right relationship with God and getting out of the crap that they're involved in. Just saying, and, and and that and that's how you truly pray for your enemies, right? And demonstrating bold faith, right? So God's intervention um, in in First Samuel fourteen eighteen through twenty three teaches us that 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 God is not bound by human limitations. You know what I mean? He works in ways that confound the wisdom of the world, demonstrating His supremacy over the affairs of humanity. You know that's what it means that that's what God's sovereignty is, right? His supremacy over the affairs and over people's lives. You know, and, and it's an assurance that even when faced with overwhelming odds, God has the power to intervene to ways that go beyond our imagination and expectation. You know, as 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 we explore the, the divine intervention in this passage, let's open our hearts to the possibility that God might be working in in our lives in ways that cannot be fully grasped. Right? In the moments of uncertainty, guys, when confusion surrounds us, the enemy seems to gain ground. Let us hold fast to the belief that our God is a God of unexpected deliverance. Right? Consider the challenges you currently face in your life. Right? How, how, how might God be working in unexpected ways to bring about deliverance? And we're not talking about and I'm talking about, I'm not talking about all this deliverance crap that you see out there, because all that to me is all false. I'm talking about God's divine intervention, right? You know, it, it could be a, through a small, seemingly insignificant event, a change, excuse me, a change in, in, in uh, circumstances or a divine alignment of people and resources, right? So, so the narrative of verses 18 through 23 encourages us to trust that even when we can't see the full picture, God is orchestrating the events of our deliverance in ways that surpasses our understanding, right? You know what I mean? And, 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 and may this exploration 
deepen your confidence in unpredictable yet sovereign nature of God's intervention, right? As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us embrace the truth that our faith, if it's like Jonathan's, can pave the way for divine intervention that sur surpasses our expectation and transforms the courses of our journey. You know, now as we glean the insights of this timeless narrative of Jonathan's full faith, right, in 1 Samuel 14, verses 16 to 23, let's bridge the gap between ancient history and our contemporary lives. The lessons embedded in this passage offer guidance, profound guidance, for our faith today. You know, uh, uh, in our lives, moments of uncertainties are inevitable, right? The Israelites face the formidable foe, and similarly, we, conf we, 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 work, we confront challenges that may shake the foundations of our faith. And as we, as we reflect on Jonathan's audacious trust in God, let us consider our own times of uncertainty. You know, what Philistine army looms over our horizons? What challenges have the potential to paralyze us with fear? By acknowledging and reflecting on these moments, we pave the way for personal growth and the deepening of our faith. See, Jonathan's bold faith was not a distant historical event, but a living example of what it means to trust God amidst adversary, uh, adversity. <coughs> so, excuse me. To apply Jonathan's bold faith in our lives, we must first recognize that faith is not a passive concept, right? It's a, it's a dynamic force that calls us into action. And like Jonathan, we could step out in faith, confronting our challenge with radical dependence on God. It involves aligning our actions with our belief in God, who is greater than any obstacle. As we navigate the complexities of our modern world, Jonathan's example challenges us to live out our faith with courage and conviction. One of the most powerful ways to reinforce the lessons of Jonathan's stories is through the sharing of our personal stories or examples of faith in action. You know, as a community, Let's create a space where our experience comes testimony to God's faithfulness. You know, even in your own communities, in your own, you know, in your own churches, right? You know, uh, 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 whether you're overcoming personal struggles, right? Navigating career uncertainties or wrestling with God's provision in unexpected ways. These stories serve as a beacon of hope. They, they, they remind us that that the God who intervened in Jonathan's time is the same God that works in our lives today. So I invite you to consider your own experience of faith in action, right? How God has shown up in your life during times of uncertainty. Your story has the potential to inspire and encourage others in, in our community who may be facing similar challenges. You know, as we share these narratives, create a, a, a tapestry of faith that binds us together, reinforcing that, that it reinforcing that, that the truth that just as God intervened for Jonathan, he continues to intervene in our own lives. This journey of faith, right? The, in this journey of faith, it's not merely, let, let, let's not be merely spectators of Jonathan's stories, but active participants in an ongoing narrative of God's faithfulness. You know, through our personal reflection, intentional application of both faith, you know, and sharing our stories, you know, we cultivate a vibrant community that draws strength from the timeless lessons of scripture. And together, you know, and in your own communities, embrace the challenges to live out your faith Boldly trusting that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So in this pursuit of understanding and applying biblical principles in our lives, let us let us turn our attention to, to Psalm chapter 56, verses 3 and 4, a passage that resonates with the theme of overcoming fear and doubt. Now, now David, the, the psalmist declares, is when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, 
who whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What flesh what can flesh do to me? Like these words are penned centuries ago, right? But they, they hold the timeless wisdom that intersects with the challenges that we face in our Christian journey today. You know, to to reinforce the message of Psalm 56, 3 and 4, which states, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Right? So let's turn to 2 Timothy 1, 7, where the apostle Paul affirms, For God gave, it, God gave us a, a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. This biblical connection highlights the consistent thread throughout Scripture. Right, God calls his people to overcome fear and doubt by embracing the spirit of power, love, and self-control that, that, that he has bestowed upon them. This convergence of the Old and New Testament passage underscores the, the universality of the divine principle. See, in the, in, in the Christian journey, common fears and doubts can loom like shadows threatening to diminish the, the radiance of our faith. Whether it's, it's fear of inadequacy, doubt about God's provision, or anxiety of the unknown. These emotions can be persuasive, right? Just as Jonathan faced a formidable Philistine army and David was confronted with the challenges of a tumultuous life, we too confront our <laughs> metaphorical giants, right? It's crucial to acknowledge that experiencing fear and doubt is, is not a sign of weak faith, but of human reality. How then do we particularly overcome fear and doubt in our Christian walk? Well, Psalms 56, 3 and 4 offers a blueprint of, of navigating these emotions. Firstly, like David, we must actively put our trust in God. This involves a deliberate decision to shift our focus from the magnitude of our fears to the magnitude of our God, right? Trust becomes an anchor that steadies us in the storm. And secondly, praising God's word is a powerful antidote to fear. Immerse yourself in the promises found in scripture, right? When doubt creeps in, let the truth of God's words resonate in your heart. The more we praise God's word, the more it becomes a shield against the arrows of fear. And thirdly, the repetition of I shall not be afraid in, in, in Psalm 56, 3 and 4 is a rhythmic declaration of faith. Consider adopting a similar declaration in your own life. Speak faith over your circumstances, affirming your trust in God's sovereignty. You know, this verbal act of faith has the potential to reshape your perspective. And additionally, cultivate a community of believers who can stand with you in the moments of fear and doubt. You know, sharing your struggles and victories with fellow Christians can foster a sense of unity and support. God often uses the encouragement of others to dispel our fears. If you're not in a Christian community, get into a Christian community. You know what I mean? Uh, wh whether it's whether it's going, you guys got you guys need to be in a church, in an active Bible believing church, right? So let's get back on topic. So the journey of overcoming fear and doubt is a dynamic a dynamic process that requires intentional steps of trust, praise declaration and community you know by connecting with biblical passages acknowledging common fears and implementing practical strategies we position ourselves to live out the spirit of power love and self-control that god has bestowed upon us and may psalm 56 3 and 4 echo in your hearts as a rallying cry to face fears with unwavering faith trusting in God who has overcome the world.
right? And as we draw an exploration of Jonathan's bold faith and timeless truth of Psalms 56, 3 and 4 to a close, let's reflect on some key points that have shaped our journey, right? Jonathan's courageous act of faith facing daunting Philistine army, right, serves as a, as a really compelling example of, of the life-changing power of trust in God and, uh, um, you know, amidst uncertainty in life. Like we witnessed the divine intervention that ensued, which is a reminder that God's response to our faith may unfold in unexpected and extraordinary ways. The impact of one man's faith as exemplified by Jonathan extends beyond individual courage uh, to inspire and uplift the, the discouraged collective, right? The, this narrative challenges us to, to, to consider how our faith can radiate hope in the midst of challenges, becoming a catalyst for positive change within our communities. And Psalm 56, verse 3 and 4 echoes the call to overcome fear and doubt by actively putting your trust in God, right? This spiritual foundation, coupled with the reinforcement of 2 Timothy 1 7, establishes a robust framework of, for navigating the common fears and doubts that are marked in our Christian journey. The practical steps is outlining embracing trust, praising God, word, making declarations of faith, and cultivating a supportive community provided uh, a roadmap uh, for applying these principles in our lives today. You know, as we reflect on these insights, let's carry with us that conviction of, of, of our faith that is not a passive stance, but an active force that propels us forward. You know what I mean? It, it, it's an unwavering trust in God who responds to our audacious faith with divine intervention, who equips us with the spirit of power, love, and self-control. So in closing, may our hearts resonate with the rhythm of Psalm 56, 3 and 4 declaring, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid, what can flesh do to me? With this, with, with this, you know, uh, 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 you know, let us, let us face uncertainties of life with bold faith, knowing that our God is steadfast, and in him, we find the courage to triumph over fear and doubt. In conclusion, as we wrap up this enriching journey through the, the stories of Jonathan's bold faith and reassuring of the words of Psalms 56, 3 and 4, let his hearts swell with gratitude and unwavering faithfulness of our God, right? His presence has been powerful in the narratives of ancient warriors and in the timeless verses of scripture reminding us that he remains the anchor in our own in our tumultuous seas you know i want to extend my deepest appreciation for everyone watching on facebook or youtube or listening to our podcast and platforms you know your presence in this virtual gathering is a testament to the beauty of our connected community and together you know we've explored the life-changing power of faith and witnessed how it can inspire courage dismantle fears and usher in divine intervention you know as we navigate the challenges of life let us carry forward the echoes of jonathan's old faith and the resounding declarations of psalm 56 3 and 4. may our hearts continually attune to praise trust an act of reliance on God. With gratitude, let us face our own Philistine army, our personal giants, with, a with, with the audacity of faith that sur surpasses circumstances. You know, and I want to encourage each, every one of you to embrace the uncertainties ahead with the spirit of full faith. Our God is not confined by the limits of our, our understanding. His ways are higher, his plans are greater, and in the tapestry of your life, let faith be the thread that weaves the narrative of triumph over filth, over filth, the resilience in the face of doubt and the unwavering trust in the one who holds the future, right? Right? And
10 guys, you know, and, and, uh, uh, you know, I do have an, as we part ways, you know, uh, I do have an announcement down and, and, and these are, and this now this announcement I, I say every day because I, you know, I want you guys to understand, you know, the reality of, um, these books, you know, I just, um, uh, I just, I have, I've, I've written some books, man, and, and all these proceeds of these books, they, uh, um, they, they go to our homeless ministry believers in Christ Fellowship, and we go out and feed, we go out to the homeless encampments all throughout San Bernardino County, and we bring church to the unchurched, church to the marginalized, and all proceeds of these books go to that, right? I have a, a I only have one book that right now that is on has on paperback and it's on Amazon and and it's on and, and it's on uh, all these are on Barnes and Noble and Amazon, but this book Walking in His Ways um, is only on Kindle. It's only on Amazon Kindle and paperback, right? The rest are all on ebook, which is the Apostle John. I have that as well. Um, I, I launched the new book. Right. It's called Walking in the Footsteps of Jesus. It's the journey of discipleship. It's a great book. I just launched it the other day. Um, I, well, I actually launched it four days ago, you know, um, and it's on Barnes and Noble. It's just it's a, it's a great discipleship book, man. You know, and, uh, um, you know, I have Recovery and Redemption, which is a 12 step program view through a biblical lens. You know, I have Overcoming Relapse. It's a biblical guide to relapse prevention. So if you're an addict. I think these are an alcoholic. I think these two books would be good for you. Reformation Revive, it's a journey through history's turning point. It's a great way of, of learning Bible history, right? And um, I'm going to have this book. It's called The Warrior's Heart. Um, it's a devotional that I wrote. And uh, on Barnes & Noble, we're doing a, um, we're doing a, uh, um, a promo, right? Uh, on Barnes and Noble, right, for this book. So you can get this book on ebook. Um, and uh, we're doing a promotion. And our promotion um, is going to start tomorrow at 12 a.m. And it's going to extend to November 30th of 2023, right at 3 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So, um, you know, so if you go to, uh, you know, Barnes and Noble and you want to get this book for free, it's 100% free, right? So all you got to do is put in a coupon code of, of BNPMFC777. So that's Bob, Nancy, Paul, Mary, Frank, Charlie, 777. Um, and uh, you'll get the, the devotional for free, right? And uh, uh, so I'm making this available to anybody that wants to get this devotional. It's a really, really cool devotional. And uh, if you guys get it, you guys will enjoy it. It's called The Warrior's Heart. And uh, um, But I'm making it free uh, through this time. And then what I'm going to do probably is um, make, you know, uh, my discipleship in next month, make my discipleship book free from you know, December to January, you know, so on Barnes and Noble. So right now we just have the, 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 the devotional. So, you know, tomorrow well, you can go to Barnes and Noble, put in that code. B is in boy, N is in Nancy, P is in Paul, M is in Mary, F is in Frank, C is in Charlie, 777, and you'll get that book for free, right? That devotional for free. All right. So all proceeds of all these books that we have on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, um, you know, uh, 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 all the proceeds go into our homeless ministry. And so it helps that nothing goes into my pocket, nothing. Right. So, you know, so go out and buy a couple books. Let's help the homeless. You know, that's what we do. We do it every week. So, so as we part ways in this virtual space, may the, may the lessons, learn today resonate in the depths of your hearts right let us carry the torch of bold faith into our daily lives right inspiring those around us to do the same 
right? So thank you for joining us on this exploration. We will meet again tomorrow. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for your word and we thank you for this time. And we just ask, God, that you just continue to do a mighty, mighty work, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you do. You are such an amazing dad and we love you. Lord, we just, as we go, Lord, we just ask that you just continue to do a mighty, mighty work in us, God. Change our hearts. Let us have bold faith like Jonathan, Lord. And let us do, uh, and guide us and let us do mighty works in you, Heavenly Father. We praise you and worship in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. You guys have a great day and we will see you tomorrow.